I call Jackie Dean. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I want to thank the select committee members from all sides of the House for their consideration in this flag referendums bill. We had a, had a good process with good engagement uh, by the public and enjoyed many submissions and in fact we enjoyed many suggestions for alternate flags and I think that comes to the heart of, of, of why this process is so important for New Zealanders because it gives them, it gives New Zealanders the opportunity to think about and to come to a view on what they think in terms of a flag best represents us as a country. And so we had um, a number of submitters, uh, some of whom were entertaining, some of whom gave us some very impassioned views on how they saw New Zealand. And I think that's the essence of this uh, subject is that through the, through the um, select committee process and also through the flag consideration process, which is happening at the same time, it gave New Zealanders an opportunity to put forward what they believed an alternate flag might look like. Might look like. And so that brings me back to the structure of the New Zealand flag referendums bill. It was our job in the select committee to consider the structure around the discussion, the structure around the two referendums. And if I refer to the bill and in uh, Appendix 1 and or Schedule 1 and 2, it outlines what the questions, the referendum questions are going to be. So the first question, the voting paper for the first flag referendum uh, asks the question, if the New Zealand flag changes, which flag would you prefer? So if the New Zealand flag changes, which flag would you prefer? And that question is asking people to first consider in their minds, OK, if it changes. So that immediately asks a meaningful question of the public, what well, is, if it changes? All right, so if it changes, you're right, that is something I have to think about. But then the second part of that first question is, which of these four uh, alternatives do you prefer? And so people are then directed to make an informed choice. So that is the first question. The second referendum then asks the question, it puts the existing New Zealand flag, which we've had since to, uh, uh, 1908, and the preferred alternative up, and then says, uh, asks them, of these two alternatives, which do you prefer? It is an informed choice, and it is the choice that is put out to the New Zealand public to make. Interesting, isn't it, that, that the online process for gathering uh, alternate flags has been, uh, has been a pretty busy process. There have been more than 10,000 alternate flag designs uh, published, which is really interesting, 10,000 different flag designs. And I know all of us who are interested in these things have had a look at those alternate flags from time to time, and we are coming to a view, and it will be an informed view because of the structure of this bill. Um, there are over 2 million, well, 2.7 million views of the flag gallery and more than 850 online visits. And so this has been a particularly successful online uh, investigation, which of course is uh, very appropriate given that this is such a visual question. What do we want for New Zealand? Do we want New Zealand to reflect our rich history? Do we want New Zealand to reflect our modern, forward-looking, open, progressive nature? Well, the structure of this bill um, gives New Zealanders the opportunity to do just that. And so, within the consideration of the Select Committee, we did uh, recommend some changes, one of which was the requirement for a preliminary referendum role for the second referendum. So, the preliminary referendum role for the first referendum makes, makes a public role of electors available for people to check 
that they are, first of all, they are, they are on the roll, and secondly, uh, that their details are correct. It was the view of the majority of the select committee that because the second referendum was to happen in fairly short order, then it would be an unnecessary expense and an un unnecessary process to make the second preliminary referendum roll for the second referendum available. The committee also by majority uh, decided or, or have recommended to Parliament that the, um, a regulated period be inserted into the Bill to prohibit Members of Parliament from spending parliamentary funding on referendum advertising. Now, this is consistent with the Electoral Act, uh, provides for a, a level playing field in the consideration on, on what will be a very focused discussion, no doubt, um, uh, leading up to the referenda or referendums, and so the committee agreed to insert that, make that recommendation. We did consider um, other aspects that were brought to us. Um, um, some submitters uh, said to the committee that they believed that the word Aotearoa should be included in the bill. We considered this. Um, that the title of the bill should, consider, should contain Aotearoa, of course, Māori Language Week, um, but it was determined that due to a, a really a technical nature, and that is because the New Zealand flag is, no, is known as the New Zealand flag, um, within the flags, emblems and name. I know it's difficult for New Zealand first, right? I know it's difficult because this is a little bit technical, but just breathe through your noses, boys, and, and you, might, you might get it. So in terms of the Emblems and Names Protection Act 1981, it would therefore have been a little inconsistent. The timing of the flag uh, consideration process was also raised by some submitters, and uh, the, the committee... Uh, considered the views which were strongly um, given to us, particularly by uh, the RSA and other members who had the view that in this year um, the consideration was inappropriately close to the Gallipoli campaign centenary and also the Anzac Day commemorations. The, rea the reality of it is it doesn't matter um, where these referendums were timed, they were always going to be adjacent to some national celebration or some national event, and it was felt, and I, I agree entirely, that it is far more appropriate to be having this consideration away from an election year because it would either be eclipsed or maybe eclipse the consideration in a general election. And it, uh, we believe, by majority, that it is much more appropriate to give these referendums their own space. Um, the, 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 the committee considered at the same time uh, a petition from the Honourable Trevor Mallard, who no doubt will make a contribution on that petition in the House today and in, in subsequent debates. The, the committee listened again uh, carefully and with respect to Mr Mallard's uh, petition and petitioners um, calling for the New Zealand Government to include a question in the first referendum asking New Zealanders if they wanted a change of flag or not. Um, it was considered, but by majority the committee held the view that the um, order of the questions as introduced provided for a more informed choice and a more uh, informed consideration of the question at, at hand. So, Mr Speaker, I am very pleased to speak in the second reading of the flag referendums um, bill. I believe that the structure that is being proposed in this bill is the right structure to provide New Zealanders with an informed choice, uh, an opportunity to provide New Zealanders with the opportunity to consider where we stand in the world. What does New Zealand stand for? Um, what are the alternatives that might uh, reflect who we stand for and what we stand for now, do they reflect us as a New Zealand that we want to be? Do they reflect us as an outward-looking, progressive, open country? Mr Speaker, I think this bill puts the structure in place and now it's up to the people. Thank you. Good